Hello everybody, my name is Drew Demon and I'm the Devil's Stockbroker. we got a lot to talk about today. So the market had a bit of a mixed day. Uh, it started off pretty red, but ended up kind of rallying towards the end of the day. So taking a look at the different sectors, it seems like the defensive performed consistently really well. So you had the health technologies sector, which did really well, especially Johnson & Johnson and uh, Pfizer, up about 3% each of them. Um, we also had uh, retail trade and uh, consumer defensives perform pretty decently. They at least remain stable or break even for the most part, but stocks like Target, TJ Maxx, uh, Home Depot, Dollar General all went up today. And this is kind of a signal that the market is transitioning a little bit into more defensive sector stocks. The electronics technology was mostly red and technology services were kind of mixed, I would say a little bit closer to the red side. Moving over to NASDAQ, we can see that almost all of the semiconductors are doing really, really badly right now, especially NVIDIA, which declined 7.5% today. Um, I had pointed this out in my video early on this week that I thought that NVIDIA and the semiconductors were going to get really hammered this week. Uh, it turns out that that was <laughs> more accurate than I expected it to be. Um, I, I really didn't expect it to get so badly schwacked, but uh, NVIDIA by itself declined massively this week, seeing a drop from this tweezer top all the way down, uh, closing 22% down this week so far. Um, I gotta say, I, uh, I feel a little bit cheated by the, um, by the earnings. I, uh, I had only gotten puts out till Friday so those were uh, those were kind of rug pulled for me but going out a little bit longer would have almost certainly netted a massive profit so that was a bit of a it was a good call but poorly played on my part however uh, going long on puts for Nvidia for the next uh, for the next week seemed like a valid play However, we do have the earnings uh, dividend coming up in a couple of days, so I'm kind of expecting for NVIDIA to get a little bit of strength, and we can see this cipher pattern starting to play. So expect NVIDIA to uh, get a little bit of a bounce, especially with this big, deep wick going into this cipher pattern here. Um, tomorrow, I'm expecting NVIDIA to go a little bit sideways and maybe show a sign of strength, in which case you might consider playing it to this first target on this harmonics channel uh, it seems pretty far away but it's uh, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility um, calls going out till uh, one Friday or two Fridays from now are actually pretty doable right now and this actually could be an opportunity to catch a bounce Nvidia likes to get picked up at these levels pretty uh, pretty quickly uh, you'll notice that the last time that we were here Nvidia had grabbed a um, had had grabbed a little bit of liquidity down at around a hundred and forty dollars before it made a big bounce this is one that i would say is more of a high risk to reward play so if you're going to play this one keep it uh... keep your exposure thin don't uh... don't just dive head first into like a bunch of yolo calls or anything like that it's not what this kind of play is for it's sort of like a, eh, i'll throw fifty bucks at it see what sticks Moving over to Apple, so I was uh, paying attention to what the broader market was doing, um, especially the SPY, and I watched this rally happen on the SPY starting at um, starting at early on this morning, and as I watched the SPY start going on to test its 20 uh, 20 period moving average on this 30 minute chart on the hourly, it looks like it's uh, got a little bit of ways to go. So I'm kind of watching for this target right here for the SPY to reach about this price level, somewhere around $400. We were expecting this bounce, and yes, I did take profit here. So as soon as we had this big decline, I was like, that's perfect. That's exactly my price target. Uh, it, it crossed 390, and I was like, that's it. Now SPY is going to bounce. Uh, what signaled that to me was this first bottom right here, and now we have a clear double bottom so now that we've had this very very large head and shoulders pattern start to form up I'm expecting a third shoulder or the second shoulder to turn up right around here before getting rejected off of this 200 moving average on the one hour chart and then 
go back into decline for the remainder of the month. September is still looking pretty bearish for us, so I'm looking for uh, this price to elevate to around $400 before going back into puts and riding it down until at least the first week of October. Um, just as a hedge, some long puts that I uh, that I have on the side. Um, that's that's a good way to stay short on the overall market, but playing short term long position uh, such as with UPRO or just a couple of you know near the money uh, spy calls for a uh, for a really cheap um, for a really cheap premium going out till next Friday is a valid play. But um, at this point, with the way that the market bounced so quickly, those are probably a little bit expensive, so they may be out of reach at this point. And honestly, the uh, risk to reward is pretty thin here. So the reason why I'm speculating on this is because of a we have a long weekend coming up, so I'm expecting that this Friday we're going to see the SPY top at around this level before we get that hard rejection off of either its 20 period one hour moving average or it could even possibly get as high as the 200 before it gets rejected and then bounces off there but I'm thinking there's not enough time between now and the close of Friday for it to get that high it's possible the spy has done crazier things but um, the market is really um, is really pricing in a lot of fear right now the uh, one thing that does give me some uh, expectation that it could bounce higher than uh, than we might expect is because of how the VIX is acting. So looking at the volatility index, we see that there's this clear area of resistance that the VIX has been hitting. There's these tall wicks on the uh, on the upside of these uh, on the upside of these last four daily candles this week. Even though the market's been selling off consistently, the VIX has been stalling out here. And it seems like we've got a nice big red engulfing candle. So tomorrow I'm expecting a bit of a market rally and the VIX to sell off to about 30, uh, or excuse me, $23 before it bounces and then starts to retake this harmonic target of $35 going into the end of the month. Uh, the VIX has not exploded the way that I was looking for it to. I was even expecting a bit of a retrace on the VIX earlier on. Um, you may recall that last week I called VIX to bounce off of its 50 period moving average on the daily and get rejected and form a double bottom down here at $20 on the VIX before it bounced, but we didn't get that. Instead, it went straight up through its 50 moving average and it got rejected here at $36, um, it was $37 before we got this red engulfing candle. So tomorrow, I'm expecting the market to rally uh, mainly in the tech sector because it got hit the hardest recently. So going long on NVIDIA temporarily might be a way to play this just because it's very oversold right now. However, Take note that the momentum is still very bearish right now. So wait to see how this plays out starting out in the morning. If uh, if the chart starts to turn around for NVIDIA, you might get a little bit of short-term momentum to the upside. And that is, that is how I'm playing the market currently. Um, you'll also notice that on the hourly, we do have this MACD cross developing. So if we do get that confirmed crossover, that's... Uh, that would be my confirmation to enter into this play and uh, an additional confirmation of things to come for the rest of the market. Uh, you'll also notice that the corporate junk bonds, the HYG bonds, which I've been calling out as a leading indicator of what the market is going to do, was actually setting up a similar play with, uh, uh, with the corporate bonds starting to get very bullish. Now, it did completely fill this gap here. And now we have some resistance to work our way through in between the two levels at uh, 74.50 and 75 dollars on the corporate high yield bonds. Now, if uh, if we do break this level and we manage to get the corporate bonds breaking above 75 dollars, then I would expect that to confirm the market rally as well. So, depending on how strongly the VIX rejects, how high the high yield bonds move and how quickly the semiconductors and tech stocks rally going into Friday, I would expect the market to jump very quickly. However, I'm 
considering this whole thing to be a bull trap. Um, as I was alluding to earlier on in this video, we've got a long weekend coming up, and long weekends tend to be very bad for the market. So with uh, with the uh, with the long weekend coming up, I'm expecting for the market to rally and form this final bull trap, at which point we'll completely form a big bear flag. And once we break up to the upside of this bear flag and reject on Monday, I expect a sell-off going out uh, going out till the end of next week. In addition, I would be paying particularly close attention to Apple. So Apple has had its first green candle uh, this week. We had this green doji candle, not really counting that much. The spinning top isn't really as reliable. But we did have a very deep wick on this candle, and we had uh, we saw that it rejected this price level. Um, not, not very strongly, but uh, it was a rejection of $155. So... That is the point where I look at my, my Apple position. Any short-term Apple uh, puts that I had would be closed, and I would be looking to go long on Apple and catch a move to the upside. Kind of look for a V-shaped recovery to uh, fill this gap at around $163. Once Apple hits this level, that's when I expect the next rejection to come and for us to start moving back to the downside. Um, my reason for that is because looking at where the uh, where the stock is traded as of the last several weeks, it sold off very quickly and went straight through a significant area of support right here. It just cut through this almost immediately. It spent no time here. So Apple, in my opinion, has to fill this gap and reject off of its 200 daily moving average before it gets rejected and continues selling off to the downside we do have a very large cipher pattern this large bearish harmonic pattern that's been forming since we had the top of the market back in january so this entire cipher pattern has yet to play out and it's got a long way to go so the target ultimately for apple is sitting down at around a hundred dollars based on uh, based on that harmonic pattern so we have a long way between where we're currently trading now and the uh and, and the rest of uh, and the rest of the year moving on to the energy sector i'm paying very close attention to exxon mobil um i had initially gotten into this uh this paper trade that you see here we'll I'm going to kind of ignore that for right now. Uh, it was an early entry. But you'll notice that what I had picked out was for this breakout on the bear flag with the expectation that ExxonMobil would start running back up towards previous highs and break this $110 level. That was my previous expectation. However, what we got instead, which I had also accounted for as a possibility, was that once we had hit this, uh, once we had filled this gap back here at uh, in early June, that we would reject and have to retest the top of this bull flag before we get another shot to the upside. And as you can see, we did get some of that. We got a nice deep wick on this red candle. It's formed a bit of a spinning top candle, um, which still red so it's bearish i'm expecting a little bit of sideways chop in exxon mobile for the rest of the week probably going off into uh friday and maybe even monday next week um or tuesday next week excuse me the um long-term expectation however and my forecast for exxon mobile is for the uh for the energy sector and oil to get more expensive and uh there's a couple of reasons for that we're looking here over at the uh, Brent oil prices, it's UK oil, and what we see is that oil's been selling off actually in its price per barrel, but I'm actually thinking that the market is pricing it incorrectly. Um, recently what we've had is a, uh, a wedge that had formed where the, um, where the oil prices were beginning to soften up, and then we had a breakout of this wedge, but unexpectedly, this tweezer top had formed on the news that uh, Germany was going to solve its crisis by burning more coal rather than depending on Russian natural gas and oil products. 
And somehow this translated to oil selling off three days in a row back down to uh, 92 or 91.8 dollars per barrel. And uh, I'm I'm anticipating that the market is is wrong about this. The um, the wicks down here show a strong amount of support and right now uh, with this lower low in the price with a higher low in the RSI indicates that there is uh, a lack of momentum here to drive the price even further um, despite what certain forecasters may say that uh, oil is going down to like eighty dollars or some ridiculousness like that um, I don't think that it's it's pricing in the possibility of Chinese involvement in Taiwan I don't think that it's pricing in the uh, the change to the uh, to the oil market with the United States and Saudi uh, Saudi oil uh, muddying up the waters and certainly not uh, with Russia being indefinitely cut off economically from the rest of the world uh, as a direct result of the Ukraine crisis so at the moment we have what looks like a short-term bearish outlook on oil but as soon as we get this uh, double bottom here at $92 if we get a rejection off of this price level and a green candle to close out the week I'm expecting energy to soar with oil prices going up throughout the week just because Germany by itself decides to burn more coal in order to solve its energy problems and replace um, and try to supplement its energy needs with renewables and solar and clean energy while it is very noble and it's it's a worthwhile pursuit doesn't directly translate to a three-day decline in oil prices the way that we've seen it's not it's disjointed from reality um, a decline of twelve and a half percent doesn't make sense here so even though the energy sector is being driven by the news in the downward direction I'm seeing this as a buying opportunity to go long on energy, hence why I am going to be scaling in a little bit more into some Exxon mobile calls uh, going out till the end of November with the expectation that Exxon Mobil will hit $110 uh, dollars at the high side and cross $100 within the next 30 to 45 days. The next sector that I feel is really due for some serious punishment uh, is probably Amazon. Um, Amazon's had two short-term rallies since this sell-off from the top really began. Um, it had one rally here on the uh, 19th of August, and it had another one just today, uh, early on in the morning, going out till till the end of the day. Um, so I have some expectations that Amazon will continue to rally for at least a couple more days. Um, it may end very abruptly at the first day of trading next week, um, but I anticipate that with this big wicking candle that we'll get at least a bit of a push from Amazon, maybe to try to test this uh, level of resistance here at around $132 or so um, before we get a nice rejection to the downside. Amazon's been it's it's honestly been one of the weaker stocks since the uh, since we've hit the top of the market, and uh, I, I really strongly feel like this thing has some serious downside ahead of it, going till the uh, going till the end of the uh, to the end of the year at least until October when they'll begin their holiday season. Earnings contraction is going to start really hitting all of the companies that are dependent on. Uh, consumer cyclical spending um, and Amazon has one of the biggest exposures to that because they're selling uh, they're selling a lot of high quality luxury products that are dependent on their sellers and stores um, but have also high rate of return from uh, from consumers and overall on the daily the momentum is so bearish it's just so extremely bearish and we haven't even really truly begun to see a sell-off it's down 12 and a half percent from the top uh, that we had in August and I still see a lot of pain coming for Amazon uh, out to the uh, end of September at least until we start to retest this line of support 
at around a hundred and five hundred and ten dollars so in this short-term rally I'll be looking for an opportunity to make an entry to short Amazon and other retail sector stocks ones that I would avoid shorting is probably Walmart um, just because Walmart is extremely consumer uh, defensive and it tends to perform very well during these uh, during these these intensely um, destructive financial conditions Walmart has consistently performed very well in recessions and times of financial hardship just because they have the cheapest goods they're widely available they have very low cost of their stores and they have a tremendous amount of inventory capacity so they are able to sustain operations even if they have a glut of inventory that they can't get rid of like they do right now so they have plenty of ways to get rid of their inventory it's just going to take them some time to work through it but I wouldn't be shorting or going long on Walmart at the moment because uh, right now we haven't hit the bottom of the market so there's no point going long but there's also no point going short because there's not really a good risk to reward ratio there for me Amazon has the most exposure um, and is set up the as the biggest giant to fall from grace out of the entire retail sector however on the other end of it I am looking to go log on big discount stores namely Ollie um, you may recall that we uh, we called out Ollie at the uh, bottom of the market uh, back in May and we had called this big move although it, it was a lot bigger than expected Ollie roared from forty dollars all the way up to seven uh, all the way up to seventy two dollars at its high water mark um, it has a little bit of selling ahead of it, but I think that Ali is well positioned to be one of the bigger performing discount stores going forward. So if you are looking for a consumer defensive sector stock to go long in as protection, I think that Ali is probably an excellent place to look at it, especially with this, this big ballooning surge of volume that you see right here uh, in the last few days. There's been a sudden sell-off and pullback in the stock, leaving it very oversold, and there's a tremendous amount of support here. Um, at uh, at this level where it has uh, it's previously acted as serious resistance for it here here and here but as soon as it broke through those levels it took off and now it has to go in the opposite direction where Ollie is trying to break down through this area so I expect it to have a very hard time breaking through this area and if we end up getting a v-shaped recovery there's a big opportunity to catch a bounce to the upside and return back above this 200 period moving average at which point I expect Ollie to continue to perform extremely well going forward um, as a matter of fact I'm looking for the uh, for the completion of this inverse head and shoulders pattern to play out uh, over the long term throughout the rest of the year um, just because I think that Ollie has a really good business model they have very low cost to achieve uh, to or to receive inventory they get rid of it very quickly they have an excellent markup on their product that they get from all of their wholesalers and now they have their own solo distribution which uh, which gives them a lot of flexibility and they've opened a record number of stores this last uh, quarter so all of these despite the uh, underperforming earnings I'm extremely bullish on Ali. This actually is a company that I think could perform very well coming out of the recession uh, and all throughout. So I would anticipate their stock price rising throughout the remainder of this year and the next as things get harder for people, um, especially in the Sun Belt states uh, and the Midwest where Ali stores are most uh, prevalent. Uh, another one to pay attention to is Big, Big Lots. Uh, Big Lot stores have uh, been selling at the bottom of its market recently for the last uh, for the last quarter actually, and they posted a positive earnings for the first time in uh, in four reports. So this was uh, this was quite a surprise that Big Lots turned around with a positive report. And uh, this is the, la the last time that they were trading down here was during the uh, COVID panic of. Um, of 2020 so the actual COVID crash is the last time that they were here and this this for me is like this is pretty much the bottom of Big Lots uh, uh, trading price for me so um, it may be early yet to take a long position but you know earlier is better than too late so if you're looking to go long on something that will perform well and be a very defensive uh, sector to be in 
then Big Lots is another discount store that's very popular in the Great Lakes region and the uh, and New England. They're uh, they're pretty um, they're they're pretty much nationwide, but those are the uh, those are the areas where they are the biggest, and that's uh, that's a very um, they have a very profitable business model providing access to uh, cheap furniture and household goods at discount prices that is going to be very necessary for people uh, going into this recessionary environment. I'll quickly wrap up with looking at the bond market really, uh, really fast, just because this is this is kind of giving us a big tell on the direction that the market is going. So right now, the bond market is still deep in inversion, uh, with the two years trading well above its yield um, over the 10 year. And right now, it is starting to look as though it's working its way up to coming out of inversion over the course of the next month or two. If we see the bonds come out of inversion and uh, Pay especially close attention to the short-term uh, T-bills, these one, three, and six-month bills. Um, when you start to see them become extremely volatile, like we have in the last few days, this usually signals a big sell-off in the market. But as well, once you see the two-year yield uh, uninvert the 10-year, then what we'll end up seeing is the market start to become weaker in anticipation of that. Um, bond traders usually get right what the stock market gets wrong and when you start to see volatility and fear as in yields going up in the bond market then that is going to tell you everything you need to know about where bond traders see the future of uh, of the market and when you see them putting their money going into the long distance uh, bonds such as the 10 20 and 30 year bonds this is a signal that they are putting that they are putting all of their money in the long distance believing that the future of the short term is less certain and less profitable notice that the uh, the one the one month T bills in particular have been uh, creating this huge 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 bull flag um, this this big run up has left the uh, has left the one month yields flagging at just around 2.3 percent and as soon as we get a break above this i think that these yields are probably going to take off even higher yet and uh and pay close attention to this because this this has signaled market crashes before like going into uh 2018 this market was going absolutely crazy the uh the yields were rising rapidly on the one month T-bills so quickly because of collateral and liquidity crisis that the T-bills became almost uh, they, they were changing hands so quickly and this was acting as a huge signal of a market crash that finally hit at the uh, at the end of 2018 um, and that that crisis led to a huge huge decline going forward as we started to uh, as we started to tighten up monetary policy going into 2018, 2019, and 2020 before the Fed suddenly reversed their decision and basically had to catch the market with their, uh, with their COVID protection and uh, basically just printing unlimited money. So it's not, it's not necessarily a direction that I want you to pay attention to, but rather volatility. And right now we have a lot of volatility in the bond market that should be, that should be pretty much scaring the living shit out of everybody. The big, the big marker that I'm really paying attention to is the 10 and 2 year bonds. These, this is what, this trend is what really matters here for the signal that once we come out of inversion, that the market crash, the big one, is finally coming. And it's going to be coming very quickly this time. Um, I don't think that the market is moving normally and that history, while it's beneficial, to be able to look back at it and see the way that the market's behaved in the past. The market is extremely reactive right now, very volatile. And this breath of air, this this little bull this little bull rally that we're about to get here uh, in the next couple of days is likely not going to last. And just be prepared for the rug pull. If you're going to play this to the long side uh, on the broad market, pay attention to the bonds. It's really important to understand that the bonds are more meaningful for the direction of the stock market than we realize. And right now, this orange line that you see, this is the 10-year yield, and the light blue is the 2-year yield. It's catching up fast. The 10-year is 
very rapidly. It's moving almost vertical while the two-year is still rising. It's rising more slowly, and eventually there will be a cross. Once this cross occurs, that uninversion, once it comes up above the zero line here on the uh, two-year and 10-year yield curve, that is the signal that the market is about ready to make its big move to the downside. And once everybody sees that, then institutions are going to start preparing for that big move. And it's coming. It's coming very soon. Within 6 to 12 months is the average for when the 2 and 10 year uninvert. But as I said, the market has been extremely reactive. And the crash that we've seen over the last several months has happened so fast as compared to the past where these moves would have normally taken more than 6 to 12 months to complete. We're seeing them in half that time or less where the where the SPY has been moving by uh, leaps and bounds, moving 12, 13, 15, 20 percent over the course of weeks rather than months. And it's just happening so much faster than it has in the past. So and I would attribute this to retail investors. I would attribute it to how quickly we have learned to adapt to this market. Um, retail traders have gotten so knowledgeable so quickly, and I think that we're really rapidly becoming the scourge of Wall Street because of just how fast we learn to play the game. And now retail traders, it, we're being talked about in the news nonstop about how we're refusing to sell, how we're the reason why the market hasn't had its flush out and why the market isn't behaving normally. They're blaming us for all of these problems, and maybe it is our fault, but isn't that a good thing? Because right now, Wall Street's been so irresponsible with how they've managed the money of the market, how they've managed the money of, of our um of our society, of their customers and clients, and all the mismanagement that's going, I could just as easily attribute to Wall Street. And now that retail, more responsible adult individuals who are understanding the behavior and the movement of this market, people who actually will do something with the money that they're receiving rather than just throw it and piss it away, I think that that's a good thing. So yeah, I'll gladly accept blame from Wall Street and the Wall Street Journal and all of the other uh, all the other financial news media that wants to bash retail investors for our participation saying that we're causing problems air quotes I'm glad that I'm that worthy of being mentioned by name in your article as your singular biggest headache and the reason why the market isn't behaving normally that tells me that we're winning so Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you keep on winning and keep making more headaches for Wall Street. As I said, keep an eye out for this market. Look for a little short-term pullback in the market, a little bit of a run up to around 400 in the SPY. Keep a close eye on the tech sector and energy and wait for that big opportunity to enter in for that huge flush out. In my next video, I'll be talking about the state of meme stocks and we'll cover all of the, uh, all of the main meme tickers going into the next several months. But until that time, have a hell of a time in the markets.